The Prodigy results might change an important concept in dual antiplatelet therapy. Longer might not be better. In this independent study reported during the ESC 2011 hotlines, more than 2,000 patients scheduled for PCI were randomly assigned 20 days after stent implantation to either 6 or 24 months of dual antiplatelet therapy. The primary point, which was again uh, all-cause death MI and CVA, was almost identical in the two study groups. 10% in one group, 10.1% in the other. With respect to the bleeding, we did see differences because the key safety endpoint, which was again BARC 5, 3 and 2, was more than two times higher in a highly significant manner in patients who kept on clopidogrel for 24 months with respect to the short duration of treatment. Our study can lead us to a very simple conclusion that discontinuation of clopidogrel after six months is safe in patients, probably even safer than prolonging clopidogrel for more than six months. It seems that the new generation of drug-eluting stents are overcoming the problems of late thrombosis that created many debates four years ago. The results of the Byrne Rotterdam cohort study conducted on 12,339 consecutively enrolled patients and presented during the ESC 2011 hotlines demonstrated an impressive low rate of late stent thrombosis, with the unrestricted use of everolemus eluting stents compared to earlier generations of sirolemus and paclitaxel eluting stents. The benefit in terms of everolimusolutine stent was mainly pronounced uh, during the uh, late time period that is uh, beyond one year with a significant relative risk reduction of 67% uh, in favor of everolimusolutine stent as compared to serolimusolutine stent and resulting in a significant risk reduction of 76% uh, in favor of the Averolimus as compared to the Paclitaxel uh, eluting stent. ESC guidelines on acute coronary syndrome and non-ST elevation have just been reviewed and updated. Christian Hamm and Jean-Pierre Basson co-chaired the presentations in Paris of this important document. What is novel is that the concept still uh, high-risk patients have to go to angiography because they benefit from revascularization and we introduced a rapid rule-out protocol based on high-sensitive troponins. This is the first guideline that introduces high-sensitive troponins uh, to the guidance uh, of patients and based on high-sensitive troponins you can uh, now uh, use a rapid rule-out protocol which allows you to rule out acute coronary syndrome within three hours and that's very novel. We have, on the one hand, new possibilities with prazugrel and ticagrelor. Ticagrelor is favored because it has been administered in patients in all sorts of situations, medical therapy, invasive strategy, percutaneous coronary intervention, and cabbage. And prazugrel is an option, but prazugrel has been developed in the setting of PCI in acute coronary syndrome. On the other hand, we have a more restrictive approach to the use of glycoprotein to be inhibitors because we know now that giving them a front of PCI doesn't bring any, uh, let's say, improvement in the outcome, whereas we have an excess of bleeding. And that's the reason why we confine these drugs to PCI and in high-risk situations like thrombus, high thrombus burden or troponin release. France is a pioneer country in transcatheter aortic valve implantations. The procedure is closely followed up through a national registry, France 2. Since January 2010, 3,050 patients have been included in the registry. In Paris, Martine Gillard presented the first data from the registry in which Edwards valves were used in 68% of the cases and core valves in 32%. This registry shows us that there is no difference between the two types of valve. They show a difference when you compare the Kaplan-Meier mortality rate uh, in function of the access uh, way. If you implant the valve uh, by transfemoral route, it's the, the mortality is less than if you implant the valve by 
transapical or subclavian root. The success rate of implantation is 97%. It's very, very impressive. It's very good. The complication of uh, this uh, technique is high, but this complication is similar to the randomized trial performed in USA, the partner trial. We can uh, offer to the high-risk patient a new solution. This high-risk patient very often was not treated because it was too dangerous for them to have this uh, treatment. So with this new technique, it is possible for this patient to have a solution, to have a treatment and to improve their quality of life. So I think it's, very, it's a real innovation in cardiology.